Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Look at Octodad Dadliest Catch. I think everyone at this point probably kn knows the elevator pitch for this, sorry. I just choked on my own lingo there. Um, the elevator pitch for Octodad Dadliest Catch, though, if you are not familiar. Basically, you play as Octodad. He is an octopus, but he has a family that he loves very much. Two kids and an uh, intelligent and, and beautiful and understanding wife. And he wants to keep from them that he's a cephalopod in human's clothes because he doesn't know how they would react to that. It's the pseudo-sequel, maybe you'd call it like an actual sequel to the Octodad prototype that came out uh, in the th almost three years ago now, I think, uh, from some students at, uh, I believe it was DePaul University in Chicago, and they formed Young Horses Development, and this is the game that they've come out with. Uh, we're gonna do some free play here. Uh, the, the pitch that I will use for Octodad, Dadliest Catch, which I spent, you know, three or four hours with in various states at conventions and beta builds prior to conventions, and now this build as well, the, the final release. Um, the, the pitch that I'm gonna say is I, I love Dadliest Catch, and I think it might be the most ambitious, silly game ever made, if that makes sense. Like, last year we saw some silly games, probably Archery with Sillery, I think this is all kind of like comes out of co-op to some extent. They're all co-op influenced, I think, if they're not directly, at least a, the tangentially aware of it. But they, those have kind of been like one-off, basically like physics engines, and it's like, how crazy would it be if you were doing surgery with this weird physics engine? It makes everything really complicated, right? Uh, like, I just want to pick something up, but that's difficult. And that's cool, I really like Surgeon Simulator 2013. I named it my, what, like, third favorite silly game of 2013. Whatever that means. Uh, but Octodad, has like a real story, variable quests, fully voice acted, is wickedly funny, and also has like this really like genuine and earnest heart to it that makes it almost a little touching, and that is not something that you would necessarily expect if you were just looking at the marketing materials here. So we're playing as Octodad, and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a couple of levels here. This is uh, the second level of the game, basically after the tutorial. So again, basic premise of Octodad is that uh, we're trying to keep our family from knowing what we are basically as we go about our daily lives. So uh, there's gonna be a lot of subtitles. Th those are on by default There's a lot of voice acting as well I'm gonna talk over most of it, but it is fully voice acted and very competently voice acted by the way I don't call them subtitles. I, I'm I think I've coined this correct me if I'm wrong check this out blub titles You'll see why anyway step one get to the kitchen. I'll talk about the controls uh, when I have a moment here I'll let them talk Oh, they have nothing to talk about. Okay, make some coffee. All right, so the the basic premise of Octodad, in terms of like a gameplay standpoint or a mechanic standpoint, is very similar to uh, those games that I mentioned earlier. You have simple tasks, but it's difficult to do them uh, with the uh, physics engine and the, and the controls because you're an octopus, and it, it seems to make more sense, I guess, thematically. Not that it necessarily matters. Um, but, like, as an octopus, you can understand how it'd be pretty hard to get around in real life, uh, whereas normally in, like, Surgeon Simulator 2013, you're just like, man, I'm a, just a really bad doctor, I guess. Octodad kind of makes sense, but anyway. Uh, so we gotta do some intermediate steps here, we're gonna make some coffee. You're not gonna believe this, it controls really well. Uh, much to the surprise, I think, of a lot of people. And I'm using the Xbox 360 controller, you might be thinking, how the hell do you use the Xbox 360 controller to play Octodad? I, it just works basically. The the analog sticks control the arms, and the triggers control the legs, and basically it just kind of flows. I'm starting to think that I am pretty good at Octodad. There is a great moment here, by the way. Uh, okay, so bring milk to Stacy. Sometimes you actually have to manipulate objects and not just like smash them into somebody's hand. You actually have to pick this up and pour it into her glass. Hey, fuck you, Stacy! I think she's mad, uh, but anyway. I was talking to, uh, or I was tweeting last night, and I was like, you guys should really make. Uh, a mod for Octodad that just makes, replaces like the octopus skin with a dad who's like really, really intoxicated all the time and instead of being like really touching it would just be exceptionally sad. Anyway, there's a lot of references in this game so I just want to see what's on these TV dinners because I hadn't looked before. You can see up there there's like Vlamberios, obviously you're probably familiar with who Vlambear is, um, having made Nuclear Throne and Super Crate Box. I want to see the turkey dinner. Oh, it's just a turkey dinner. Okay, drink some coffee. I can do that. World's number one dad. Two weeks from now, I made your coffee just the way you like it. Sea salt and tartar sauce. Fuck your coffee. All right, you know, I feel bad, like, doing things like that because it's so tempting to just, like, ruin everyone's lives in the game. We're going to have a series of chores here, but, um, it, I feel bad being, like, an asshole because my family's really nice and this game is really, really touching core to it and it's, uh, Family friendly as well, but also hilarious, the kind of things that you can get involved with. So, we have some chores here that we can see. Get the mower from the shed, grill and serve burgers, weed the garden, and chop some firewood. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to say in terms of, uh, because this is going to take me a while to accomplish this. Um, this, this level as a whole might take me like 10 or 20 minutes, but, uh, get the lawnmower. Might have to throw some of these basketballs out here first. Our kids must really love soccer, huh, honey? Oh, what are you grabbing here? Get, get the mower. Nope, not the door. I, okay, we're gonna just have to pull some more stuff out of here. There still is that, you know, trademark element of, of frustration when you're trying to do something, but you just can't do it. It fits. It, it makes a lot of sense. Alright, so we're just gonna mow the lawn here, and this is gonna look really awkward, but also really hilarious. I mean, obviously, it's absurd that this guy's family doesn't know he's an octopus, but that's, it's silly, but it's good silly, if that makes sense. Um, I was talking earlier, I said, you know, this is the most ambitious silly game ever made. Uh, this is, again, if you look at something like a Probably Archery, which it has, like, a lot of events, but, or Surgery Simulator 2013, which has a lot of different surgeries. I'm not, like, trying to be derisive to either of those games, either. Uh, but Octodad, again, has, like, a genuine story and a narrative that carries you through, and multiple different levels. Uh, and I don't know how long it is, but, you know, I've changed setting multiple times. It feels like I'm playing, like, an actual game, not just a, a funny physics engine, uh, that makes things, like, really difficult to do. So we're gonna mow the lawn here. This one's a little bit difficult. Uh, I would encourage you, like, to, if you get this, play through it on your own as well. Because the dialogue genuinely between the, the kids and the mother is usually spot on. Like, really, really funny. Um, okay. Mow the lawn! It's actually pretty efficient. I think this is better than I did it off camera. You can do it. Alright, the lawn has been mowed. Grill and serve burgers is actually, like, my least favorite one. Or maybe my, my, the one that's hardest for me, at least. One thing I will say, I, I'm gonna bring up a, a couple of things, a couple of gripes that I do have with Dadliest Catch. Sometimes, because you're already using, like, every button on the controller to control something, the camera's a little wonky, you can, like, use the D-pad to sort of look around a little bit as I'm doing right now. Apologies for this, hopefully this doesn't cause you any motion sickness. Um, but sometimes you're like, I really wanna look over there, but, uh, it's not working out for me. And that can be a little frustrating. Usually the game does a pretty good job of pointing you in the right direction. Uh, but I've, I've gotten turned around a couple of times as a result of the camera being a little bit wonky. Not unexpected. So we're gonna grill these burgers. Careful not to grill your own tentacle. Put the- get- get on there! Just, like, oh, okay. Rotation is a little bit difficult. There we go. So we got one burger on there. And we're just gonna wait till it turns, like, brown, cook, serve, delicious style. Oh, got a little smoky. And then we're gonna say, alright, Cindy, get ready. Three, two, one. Oh, okay, I'll eat that one, don't worry about that, okay. Um, right, let me rotate this burger on here. I saw this guy packs the developer threw the burger onto the bun, and I was like, holy shit, he's Fonzie, so I wanna do it myself. I haven't been able to do it off camera either. Alright, this one's only gonna be- Can I get that burger medium rare, but only on the side, please? Let's try this again. Two. One. Go. Oh! Oh, it had like a little curve to it. It's alright, I'll go pick those up. Sorry! By the way, there is like a- um, it, it has like a little bit of a stealth game mechanic, and that's not really the right way to put it, but... Um... There are, um... It, there are people that watch you. Ah, oh, gosh darn it. There's people that watch you, uh, and if you bump into them or you do things that are not human-like, then that meter that's purple for me right now, if you look just above my objective, uh, will start to fill up, and if it fills up all the way, we lose. And there's other lose conditions as well. This is very much a casual level. We'll have, you know, things like boss fights that show up a little bit later, like Octodad's nemesis is a, uh, a sushi chef who is trying to get delicious medium-priced, uh, octopus rolls. Okay, sorry I hate you with the yard burger, son, but Dad's been busy at the office all day. There we go. Now we'll just climb all over your food. Sorry if your burger's a little bit sticky. And there we go. Burgers have been served. You can get the buns for yourself. Okay, now weed the garden. And then we'll make our way over here. And we will check out a another level, by the way, because this is very much, like, simplistic. And that's okay. Uh, th this level is still one of the earliest levels in the game. Uh, but... Eh, there we go. Uh, this level still... It's, it's only the second one over the course of the entire game. We'll see some difficult objectives in the next level. But we'll see, like, some seriously, uh, very, very difficult, uh, objectives that come up later. For example, um, I'm trying to think of one of the ones in the grocery store. One of the ones in the grocery store is, like, get a mango soda for your son, but the mango soda is, like, attached to, a, an airplane that's flying around this, like, m like, soda, soda advertising display in the store, so you gotta, like, platform to get all the way up there. It's very difficult. Then in, um, there's an aquarium level, and you're, like, talking with your wife, and you're having, like, real marital problems. She's like, I don't understand why you're so weird, and you're like, I don't blah blah blah, right? Like, it, it, it seriously gets a little touching and a, and a little bit 
dark something. Not dark, maybe it's not the right way to put it. But, you know, you get a little bit introspective about it. He's gonna chop some firewood here. I'm like the ultimate lumberjack, so get ready. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's the old uh, top-handed backhand you don't see too often outside of the women's tennis tour. Uh, let's try There we go. Hit it from the back, as Octodad liked to do. Get out of here. Um, see if I can chop this basketball in half after this. But, uh, yeah, and on that mission, there's like an arcade in the aquarium. And to, in order to placate your wife, not placate her, because, you know, she's actually like a really strong female character, which is something, again, looking at this game, at, at first blush, you might not expect something like that. But, you know, Octodad's wife is like a fucking role model. She's a journalist. She's really understanding. She's just a really nice lady. Um... We're about to have like a pseudo boss fight here, so I don't necessarily want to complete this quest just for a second, but uh, until I finish my train of thought. But it's like an arcade, and you have to beat seven games. So you're like playing against some dude in air hockey. You have to do the thing where you like uh, shoot the basketballs in, into the hoop, and you have to get X number in like a certain amount of time. There's a lot of like gameplay variety here, and again, I think this is where it sets itself apart from. Again, not not to say that they're worse games necessarily, but less ambitious games like um, like Surgeon Simulator 2013. And I don't know what went into the development of those games. In order to win this boss fight, by the way, I just had to knock these gnome heads into his into his riding mower. There we go. Game is very self-aware. If if you missed the like blub titles there, he was basically like, one gnome won't do anything to my riding lawnmower, and then he's like, oh no, second gnome. How did you know? Also, I love stuff like that, like a, the subtitle being, or the surtitle, I guess, uh, like a blub of contentment over casual duress or something like that. That Those words don't make too much sense uh, altogether. Anyway, um, th there's going to be some story here. I don't necessarily want to show off 100% of the cutscene, so I think what I'm going to do is actually quit to the main menu, and then I'll load up the next level. Because I don't want to show off too much of the story. The story is actually pretty important. When I used to play the, or previously before uh, PAX Prime 2013, when I was playing the beta version of this, all the cutscenes and stuff hadn't been added, so it was just kind of like, play one level, boom, next level, boom. The story really ties it together, and you're not going to believe this. This is going to sound like, oh, how much did young horses pay you? Seriously, the story will draw you in and... It'll make you happy, it'll make you smile, but there will be times as well when you're going to be like, Man, I genuinely feel for this octopus that is trying to, you know, you just do right by his family, but also he's got a deep, dark secret, right? Alright, we're going to do Jervison's Grocery, and this will be the, the last level that we'll, we'll tackle over the course of this video. Um, I don't know how many chapters are in the game, but once you beat a chapter, you can go back and play it as often as you want. I, I thank God I didn't say go back and beat it as often as you want. But we're going to the grocery store, so we've got a number of uh, objectives here, and I'm kind of going to speed through this one. You know, we do have a, a segue here. Maybe I can get on the segue and ride this. There we go through the grocery store, just like doop doop doop. Don't mind me, just your average everyday shop. We okay, we're going to move onwards then. Um, there's again tons of references. Look, Commander Video Rental. We can go up and and look at the thing here. Um, and we can see, let's count the references. Shirtless Chefs of Maryland, I don't know. Young Horses, the developers. Two and a Half Kevins, I think, is the developers as well. Esparza Parker, I don't know. Who the heck is Chris? I'm guessing that's a developer joke. Murphy's Law might be as well. Billy, I'm pretty sure, is the ridiculous fishing dude. Uh, you can see other movies over here on this side as well. And uh, there's more references in here, of course. So step one is find the frozen pizza. This took me... Quite a long time to figure out uh, the first time that... Oh, get out of the way. Quite a long time to figure out the first time that I was actually uh, playing it. But what you actually have to do is get in here. And I apologize if I'm spoiling a puzzle that maybe you'd like to figure out for yourself. But basically, all the freezer doors are, are frozen shut. So the only way for you to get a frozen pizza for your son and, uh, you know, placate him enough so that he doesn't ask questions about your cephalopod-like appearance is to make your way down here over the shelves. By the way, like... Surely any father would do this to get his son a frozen pizza, and then as you make your way through here You kind of get sucked up into the vent, and then the door breaks, and we get a frozen pe- Oh, that's ice cream bars. We don't want those. There we go. Delve deeper dish frozen pizza. I didn't even notice, but uh, you know, that's delve deeper, I guess, a, a, another game. I don't know what relationship they have with the developers, but there's a reference like that in there. Uh, get Tommy cereal. So Tommy wants like Sports Junior O's. I think the cereal aisle is really funny. Sports Johnsons. Okay, sorry. She says, "I hope nobody steals it." Well, I look over here. So we're gonna wait until she looks over here, and I'm gonna show you a reference that you're gonna like. Um, hey, I'm not doing anything, lady. What's your problem? Just hanging out. Oh, Sports Johnsons. Are those good? I've never had them. My wife doesn't let my have my son have uh, sugary cereal. 
Just kidding, all right. Frosted nut hand eggs. Sentence sounded dirtier. Check this out, we got a bunch of cereals over here. You're gonna see some, some references to developers and also some YouTubers like, hey, Total Biscuits Extra Dry Cereal. I don't think that joke is meant with derision. I think it's just meant to be funny. We'll just pour out all of Total Biscuits cereal into the soda dispenser, fountain drink thingy here. There you go. You can also see on the right side there, PewDiePie Key Lime Flavor. Maybe there's some extra jokes there. These are all people who I th believe supported uh, the, the the first build of Octodad, or the first um, public build of Octodad back when it came out. They, they played it on YouTube and gave it some uh, attention. And oh, look at this. Thank you very much, young horses, for putting my face on a bunch of toilet paper. I'm not going to hold that against you, though. You know, I, I did the kind of like Twitch promo for these guys at PAX. So I think it, like as a thank you, they're like, hey, get into the, we're going to put you into the game. If that, if you feel that's a conflict of interest, well, I apologize, but so be it. Um, it's, it's good nonetheless. Also, my face on toilet paper is basically just a perfect uh, amalgam of what I'm trying to do on YouTube, basically. is just something you can wipe your ass with. Um, thanks for uh, making fun of my life's work, assholes. <laughs> get over there. Get over there, I said. Okay, you know, speaking of Surgeon Simulator, there's Sturgeon Simulator. Anyway. Obtain Mango Soda. This one is uh, a goddamn nightmare. Hear that? Now, that's the Mango Soda on the uh, biplane up there. So the way I did this before is I climbed on top of this building, uh, and then I managed to get it. But I think what I'm supposed to do is actually, like, pick up cans of soda, and then you're just gonna, like, go, whoa, and maybe that'll work, but, you know, maybe it's actually the right thing to do to climb it. Because there is, like, a staircase-like structure here, as you can see. So... We're just gonna try to climb this. This is maybe the hardest objective I've had in my time with Octodad so far. Dadliest Catch. Whenever I say Octodad, I mean Dadliest Catch, unless I'm specifically specifying the uh, old prototype version from 2011. Okay, oh, this is actually going really well. Holy crap. It's amazing, like, in even in Surgeon Simulator 2013, which I have probably, like, four times the hours in as I have in, in this, um... I, I feel like I have adequacy or proficiency much faster in this. It's weird because it's supposed to be like, oh, you don't know what you're doing and it's very difficult to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. But you can actually get really proficient and do things very quickly, which is is awesome. By the way, you might be thinking like, as of right now, oh, it looks like the, that stealth mechanic of like people's eyes being on you doesn't matter. It will matter. So there's sea nanners bananas. I didn't see that before. Um, it, it will start to matter like we go to the aquarium, uh, marine biologists, then spot us if they just look at me and my meter goes up and I and I could find myself in uh, sincere degrees of trouble uh, So you got to kind of plan your route there. Maybe go over top of them or maybe go around them uh, Grab some chocolate milk is like the last thing on my list before a pseudo boss. Oh, excuse me, sir uh, I don't know if uh, my non octo wife would be very pleased with that all right, so let's make our way through here. Again, that's kind of a weird camera angle, but shit happens. Hey, here's Mint Craft. Build a world of flavor. Check this out. If I just go pick up the creeper head, you can do it. That's chocolate mind or chocolate mint craft. Sorry, the any reference uh, to games, living or dead, is purely coincidental. See, it like kind of gets ready to explode, and we're like, oh, gotta get rid of it. Uh, but then it's a dud. Anyway, uh, we gotta get chocolate milk. Which you know, this grocery store maybe doesn't have the best marketing. Why would you put the chocolate milk behind the other kinds of milk? It should be in its own presented area. Presented area also from like a National Geographic standpoint sounds kind of gross. All right. So I think that's all of the objectives for like the start of this level. Then we have a very quick like boss. Oh no, you know, we do have one more objective after what is like another encounter with the sushi chef here. We can annoy him too, by the way. Like, we can just continually uh, smash on this button and he'll be like, go away, or now the doors are open, he's like, come back through the doors, anyway. So, uh, we're gonna get this, we, how can we resist sushi, right? Like, our wife never lets us have it because of the mercury, if only she knew. Now we have, like, a Crash Bandicoot-style level where we just kind of run away from the sushi chef who's trying to take us down, and we crash into Total Biscuits, super dry cereal, and many, many times, apparently, oh, I got stuck in the jam, but I made it out, and cool, we're good to go. So I think I run into my wife again, and then we do like a self-checkout, which just seems like cruel and unusual punishment in, like, when I saw this, I was like, oh, so I just have to like walk up to the, uh, like a walk up to the checkout and they'll check me out? No, you have to do like the self-checkout, like, please scan your item. Place item in the, like, item loading area. Obviously a, a Stanley Parable reference uh, on the wall there, as well as uh, a VGCW reference on the wall, which is really cool. 
Alright, self-checkout, here we go. It's actually simpler than I made it out to be, but... You just take this. I can barely do this in real life, so this is already daunting for me. You just gotta make sure everything gets scanned, and then it ends up in the basket at the other side. It puts the barcode on the laser, or it gets the hose blazer. I'm talking to an American gladiator. Alright, there we go. We've checked out, and I think we are good to go then. So th we're gonna get another cutscene here, but again, I'm gonna quit back to the main menu. Very last thing we'll do here is talk about features. Uh, you know, new game and continue obviously exist. You have a local co-op, which is something they just announced like the day before the game has come out. Uh, so on one Xbox 360 controller, you can have like one person control the arms and one person control the legs and try to Voltron your way to success, which is kind of cool. There is a free play mode, which again is just like playing through the chapters over again. Steam Workshop support is in here. There's nothing yet because the game, you know, comes out tomorrow. But there's already a zero gravity level. I haven't checked it out. Uh, and you can actually make your own levels for Octodad, I guess, uh, via the Steam Workshop. What are the other extras in here? You can see like your stats, playtime, time using arms, time using legs. I'm more of a leg guy, personally. Um, and, you know, other stats. There's ties. I believe you get those ties by... Uh, like completing levels quickly or completing objectives on those levels quickly, I'm not 100% sure. And credits, but yeah, Octodad Dadly is catch. I, what I would like to say to temper what I've said so far is that I don't think that when it comes to the end of the year, people are going to say like, oh, Octodad Dadly is catch. That's like my number two game of the year. Like my, it's like on my top five games of the year. And I think that's kind of a shame because it's, it's a really, and it's a silly game. And I think that's why it's going to be written off by a lot of people. Although, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to be receptive to this too. It kind of feels like playing something with the tone of a children's movie. And it's fun moment to moment. It's, like, wickedly funny. Like, sincerely, the dialogue and the voice acting is hilarious. And the objectives that they have you do are hilarious as well. And I hope it gets the attention that I, I feel that it deserves. It, it's an incredibly ambitious, silly game. Dare I say, it pushes the genre of silly games forward a little bit. And it's got a heart, man. It'll make you feel things if you let it. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, well done all around, basically, is where I'm going with this. Uh, this is some of the most fun I've had playing a game in 2014, and I'm glad to see that it is finally out and more people can play it. I should mention, I guess, this is the PC version. PS4 version is coming a, a little bit later this year. I don't necessarily want to say a date, but I thought it was, like, March or spring or something like that. So, if you want to pick up Octodad, Dadly is catching. You know, if you like what you see, I would definitely recommend that you do. Uh, go uh, check out the link in the video description below. 15 bucks with an opening week sale that I don't know yet. Probably guessing, like... 10%, so maybe it's 1350 or 25%, so, I don't know, maybe it's like 1175, I, I don't know if that math is even close to correct, but yeah, check that out! Good game, as well, if you enjoyed the video, uh, make sure to click the like button, it helps out a great deal in your support for me, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. As always, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.